Hello my little thieves, and it is Phantom here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I don't know if it's a good idea for me to just straight up play this game right after playing that horrifyingness that was Alice Madness Returns, but here I am. We're coming on to the second day of this loveliness, so let's get into the center of my camera screen! There we go. Um, another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I, I've i gotten a little... A, a, a little... I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past few couple of days because I've been hanging out with these gorgeous girls. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Phantom. I forgot what voice I gave you, Sayuri. Yo, Sayuri. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. It is very simple. She delights in the simple pleasures. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyways. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me and buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, th that's not like you at all. I have my reason. I was reading my own line. Lol, 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 lol. Why don't we... Why don't we take a look at your purse? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Kind of rude, don't you think? She nervous... Sayuri nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She turns it upside down and the contents sp spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Girl, a homegirl is broke. <laughs> she has no money <laughs> for food. That is me every single day in university. My friends are always like, hey, yeah, can we get lunch? I'm like, I have no money. I'm going to go back to my dorm and make food. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayuri. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So, either you're not hungry or wanted an excuse to take a walk. And wanted to take a walk. Or you planned on conveniently forgetting to that your money... Yeah. Or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Because I'm rich, you know. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! Sounds like Belle. Is this Belle in female form? Where's my friend? I'm gonna tell her this. <laughs> She's gonna kill me later. And so that leaves only one option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Get some water! That's good water. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in a book as always. I, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just... It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Phantom to let me borrow some money. No. Homegirl need to manage your money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayuri. Besides, you should only buy buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a little mischievous stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, uh, did I just... Uh, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, uh, I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun. It's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That, still, coming from you, Sayuri, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Don't let her fool you. Sayuri knows exactly what she's doing. 
After all, she told you guys she's bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. Give me a second, director is texting me, so I gotta, 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 gotta look ya. Ta-da! And we're back to our regularly scheduled game. What? So she didn't even want to make the cupcakes with her own volition. She was made to make the cupcakes. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayuri. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayuri in the face. Some thumbs onto the desk. Okay. Sure enough, a giant cookie wrapped in plastic wrap. Sayuri glanced around. Is this a miracle? It's because I pay my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you bat blab blub about the cupcakes. It totally was worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! I could really go for a cookie right now, actually. Except I want to lose weight, so cookies are going to have to be on hold. I hate myself. Jeez, just eat it. She tears open the wrapper and takes a big giant bite. Nom. So good! Suddenly cross her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! That's why you don't talk when you eat! Don't talk when you eat, kids! You're going to bite your tongue! I don't do it when I'm eating. Because I bite my cheeks, actually. Not my tongue. I bite my cheeks. And that's even worse because I have canines. Very sharp canines. I think they're called canines? Hang on. I'm going to take a look at the, 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 the tooth anatomy. Mind telling me what the top ones are called? They're also called canines, so I'm not wrong. I only doubted myself because my friend was like, Oh yeah, they're not actually called canines, you know? Ah, uh, of course, that's true. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that is true. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> I I can't tell you what I'm looking at right now because if I did that, oh, I'd be in trouble. Um, because it's text messages. You don't need to know about text messages. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. And yours looks really good too, let's keep. Beggars can't be choosers! But yours is chocolate. Yeah. Why don't you think I why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I really I'm really happy you shared this one with me. Sayuri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Jeez! Oh, I have a f mm. I get it, I get it! Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches out to nudge Sayuri off her. Um. I knew that was gonna happen. Sayuri suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. H hey! Did you seriously just do that? Mouth full, so Yuri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayuri? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. I clicked on my nope. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh, that wouldn't be surprising. That wouldn't be surpri... <laughs> Skip that line. Skip it! Skip it! Skip it! She probably... She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Oh, that's my alarm to say it's 9.30. I was wondering why it was vibrating, because I didn't set a timer. I don't set a timer for Doki Doki. That's true. Excuse me! 
I mean, I'm not really into you two, but I like you, Yuri, and I kind of, I think I'm kind of into Monica, but I have no idea yet. I don't know. Um, but this game is supposed to be unpleasant, so I don't know if I should be into any of these girls. Not that I would be, but opinionly. Oh, I am on your face. Let's just move me over here a second. Oh, no, no. Um, my camera is up there for a reason. Sorry, guys. You're not going to be able to see Natsuki's face for a while. <laughs> you can't see her eyes. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super late. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica choose the Monica chose her club after her boyfriend after all. You're so strong willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh uh well my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I just lost track of time. Me every day of my life. That makes no sense though. You would have at least heard the bell ring. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Uh, maybe once I get a little better I will yay that sounds cool I'd also look forward to it is that so in that case I won't let you down phantom Monica smiles sweetly uh, I didn't mean to pressure I don't mean any pressure or anything like that because I can't read English so it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> don't worry I've been practicing a whole lot recently and I'd really love a chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, uh, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I chose to leave out Sayuri's mischievous escapade. I didn't actually know how to pronounce this word until, like, college. That's like four years ago now. Because I've never seen it typed out. I've only ever said it. Right? So I've never seen it typed out. And I always, because it looks like escape, I always read it as escape, but it's not. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyways. It looks like everyone is already settled down. I'm trying to read the like the non-dialogue really quick so that I don't have to bore you guys. But yeah. Sayuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Why does she like the closet so much? Hey Yuri. Eh? Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading today. Together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no. I was kind of waiting for you. Ah, oh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thank you very much. If there's one thing I can that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. I agree. This is not this is not tea though. This is just water. I can't um if I made tea, it'd be too hot for me to drink. I burn my tongue. I do that quite a lot. It's not good. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and goes to the closet. I follow and watch her retrieve a small water pitcher from the shelf and some kind of filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Uh, Yuri hands me the water pitcher and fetches a electric kettle. One that... No, I'm not going to make that joke. I'm going to plug this... Uh, I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, so we'll go and get some water. And then we'll go and get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I am tired. I simply watch her movements. I'd usually be ready to go to bed by now, but uh, over time. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. 
especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thank you. I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Eh? We're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so I realize... I realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's the... That's, that's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to... Do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping... Involve Phantom and Club activities? Eh? Eh? I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then, let's go, Phantom. Uh... Yuri click quickly, quickly, quickly... Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How can I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monic Monica... Monica... <sighs> So much for the easiest name to pronounce. It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. I'm reading this kind of fast to because I have to do some script reading for my voice acting work later. I'm reading this kind of fast so that uh, I'll get all the blah blah blahs out, you know. Phantom, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns the light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate... Oh, excuse me. I felt that one coming. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone who has... For having emotions. What kind of friend would that do? Would, would, would do that? Friend, you say? Uh... Um... Yuri lifts her head. Phantom... I really like being friends with you. Are you sure about that? Thanks, Yuri. I like bringing friends with you too. Are you sure about that? <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. Give me a sec. Director texted. Uh, there we go. Okay, read it. Thanks. Uh, I will do that momentarily. Don't worry about it. Um, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we filled up the water pitcher, we returned to class. Phantom, do you like oolong tea? I fucking love oolong tea. I prefer chrysanthemum though. I, I drink that every day of my life. Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the candle to 200 degrees. Is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Excuse me. Of course. I shouldn't do any less when making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be more impressed, even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided I would try and express myself a little bit more. Turns out, it's not that hard for me. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah. Uh. That's great, Yuri. 
Oh, I can push anything in it. Okay. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Phantom. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri is ki wasn't kidding. I, I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Phantom, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why's that? Well, it's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is it because of the big titties? I say it's because of the big titties. Your titties are too big for you, and that's why you get back pains. Heavy tits, you know. Struggles of big titty goth GF. Big titty any GF, really. Is that so? I wonder why that is. Yep, she was just about to say it. <laughs> Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I'm so glad that the character is an airhead because if he wasn't and he figured out what she actually was trying to say. I was right though! It's because of the big titties. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. Um, it's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candied radar. I take it, and since it'll go well with the tea, will it though? Yuri and I sit against up against the wall. Sit against the wall. Teacups on our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time. Uh, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching! How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri's always kind and cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that isn't holding the book, I ended up position I ended up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She is wearing a, her intense reading expression. She can split work with uh, private life, I guess. She'll be that type of person that can separate private life and work very easily. And I can only presume the world around her is, has uh, faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put my teacup between my legs and fumbled with the chocolate wrappers. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book and finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then it might get smudges on the page. Uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Look at this gorgeous- I'm so glad that my face is out of the way that you can appreciate it, unlike last time, but look at this pretty art- you did not- you didn't see that. Look at this beautiful art! I fucking love the eyes and the highlights. Uh, it's so pretty. I wish I could draw like this. <laughs> My drawing is terrible compared to this. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any hard- harder of a time reading it. Um... But as a result, her left arm was practically resting atop my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already total focus on reading again. I take a chocolate and pop it in my mouth. Let's do that then. Let's um, add to it. You know, I got Smarties, so it's chocolate. So, pop it in my mouth. Um. Uh, hold it up for Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts the lips as if it's the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. Apprehensively, I place the chocolate in her mouth. Oh, dang it. My chocolate is circle-y. 
Their ones are square-like. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me and she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Phantom. S sorry I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends... FRIENDS do! <laughs> right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but yeah. That's all it was, yeah. Then... You didn't need to stop or anything. <laughs> my heart is pounding and nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes met mine. How <laughs> did it even come to this? <laughs> Yuri doesn't hurt her gaze. <laughs> I notice the chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her. Why the? Where the fuck are you looking? <laughs> I raise my arm. Like before, Yuri parted her lips, but this time it's different. She takes the chocolate and places it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath. Okay, everybody! Oh my god, Monica's like a cock block. <laughs> ah! It's time to share our poems! Phantom, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The spell is abruptly broken. I I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. Well, it looks like... It looks like... My choices are leaning a lot more towards Yuri. So... I pick up the bag of chocolates. I, we ended up... In the end, we hastily cleaned up without much of a word between us. I get the feeling that something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. <laughs> Give me a second, my lips feel chapped. Okay, so this time I'm going to go Sayuri, Yuri, then Monica, then Natsuki, because Sayuri's still the childhood friend, and Yuri is like someone we're spending more time with, and Monica is someone we know, Natsuki we just met, so... Sayuri first. Oh! I like this one, Phantom. It has a really nice feeling in it. Ugh, oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. That's not very helpful, you know. It's never very helpful. I do that a lot. and <laughs> I do that a lot. Uh, I really shouldn't do that, but I do it a lot. Well, I'm not very good with figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If that makes me feel thing, if that makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me either. Oh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. You're right. Uh, but you are always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean. But I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. That still doesn't really answer the question. What? Sayuri! Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I think I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? Excuse me, I can't see you liking something sad, Sayuri. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes oh, when you have a little rain cloud on your head, a sad poem gives the rain cloud a little hug. That's so cute. And makes a happy, nice rainbow. Sayuri, 
that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, is? Maybe I'm getting better with expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Phantom! I should write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? A bottles! I popped off my scalp. I popped off my scalp. Like the lid on a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little ball little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in the bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my friends go, like exploring a, a dark cave, discovering the secrets Hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scrapping and scrapping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time lapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends took through my locked front door. Look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Did they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tiles between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. It shards all over the floor, it shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting and pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Why did this go from a very happy poem to a sad one? Holy crap, Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole, a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see. It's almost kind of creepy. It is. Like, it's happy-go-lucky at first, and then it's like downturn ugly. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, I'm writing the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayuri always has a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes make it hard for me to be pessimistic. Yuri, obviously. Let's see what you've written today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprise on expression. Do you like it? Phantom. This one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques we're practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. You really want to try giving it more Im imagery? I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly 
gulps. Swallows. Even her hands appeared sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes. <laughs> and collects her thoughts. I thought that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience for her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never shared your writing before? Yuri. Not! I shouldn't do that. That gives me a headache. I really shouldn't do that. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri. That gives me less of a headache if I do tiny ones. Huh? Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, she seems like... I don't know why you asked that question because off the bat, I already knew that Yuri seems like the person that would be nose in book at all times and no time for friends. You know, that kind of person. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night, while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by a scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an, an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread my hunger creep, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon an urge. I don't know about this one. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light of off my cutting off 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 light off of my cutting knife. There we go. The very same light that glistens. Glistens, glistens, glisten, glisten, or glisten, glisten, glisten into in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions on the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to follow me. I could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic pavilion conditioning. Pav Pavlo Pavlovanian conditioning. Pavlovini vi Va fuck, I can't pronounce that word. I slice the bread. I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I'm beginning to imagine what this poem's about. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's a bit closer to my preference reference uh, writing style. Using poems as canvas to express vivid imagery and convey emotions through them. Yeah, I take I take it at face value <laughs> that I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something... It's something different. It's something that different people can relate to. In their own way, I wanted to express the way that feels for me. To indulge 
in my in my more unusual hobbies. That it's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. The shirt's torso is the perfect size for me, but the sleeves are a little bit on the short side because I have broad shoulders. Um, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because, be, because they're embarrassing and people make fun of me. You don't have anything like that, Phantom. Don't you have anything like that, Phantom? Well, I guess I do. Like how I came into this club just to see all you four pretty ladies, not for any other reason, you know? I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individual individualities. Uh, individualities. Nom, 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 nom. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a, a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, there aren't many people like you, Phantom. Th that's exaggerating a bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I f almost feel like I'm, I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing really. You smile sincerely at me. Just uh, for just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Monica! Monica! I already know that uh, Natsuki's gonna hate it. Hi, Phantom. How is the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. I feel like she was just like, I'll take that. Yoink. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy to that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You would never know. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I thought she took it already. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than last time. The last time I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up the pen. I noticed that. Or when she's talking about literature. It's like a light turns on inside her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows? Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant I wish she didn't keep so much of her to herself. Still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh? You're completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyways. Oh, a husbando, a husbando. Let's just put mine right up here. There we go. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do. I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look-see. Save me! Hang on, let me think of the song a second. Touch it and touch it, save it, save me. Before I fall, fall. Uh, my nose, my nose is itchy. I, uh, I can't scratch it though. 
Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveform, squeaking, screeching, it's piercing. Cyan. No. Scene? Scene? Cosine. Zine. Zine? Cosine tangent. Oh, wait. These are, these are music notes, right? Uh, no. Ignore me, I'm stupid. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. Why would you play a vinyl on a pizza crust? An endless poem of meaningless... Meaningless? Load me. Oh! Save me, load... I get it. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I like... I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. I choose where and how much space your words can change a lot of the mood of the poem. Mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's hard for me to tell what it's about though. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression or a feeling. Just like a painting. Or a conversation to a reader. So putting it in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica. Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing difficult decisions. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Wait, Monica, are you breaking the fourth wall? You never know when you might change your mind or something unexpected might happen. Wait, is that a tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Is Monica's breaking the fourth wall? Is Monica the character that I have to look out for? Because I don't see her in like the poem sections where we choose the words. Hmm. Okay, let's go to Natsuki now. Well, I can admit it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're putting some effort. That's good. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of what's of Sayuri's poem from yesterday. Hey, you think so? Yeah. Well, I guess that you've been friends with her for so long, you might have the same wavelength. But you never struck out. Yeah, you never struck me as her type. Sayuri has a type all of a sudden. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? I like she's dragging around. It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But if it's this, if it's this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say, we take care of each other In our own way Whatever Whatever <laughs> Whatever it is I don't get it Oh yeah, I was supposed to show you my poem Here Amy likes spiders You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spy- Oh, come on, not all spiders are ugly. Black widows are gorgeous. That's why I'm not friends with her. That's mean. Not friends with someone just because they like something else that you don't like? Oh, that's cruel. 
Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. She likes spiders too much. That's why my brother wouldn't be friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really badly. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders. So her hands are probably gross. You rude motherfucker. <laughs> That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without spider lovers. I'm gonna tell everyone. Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was a way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best. That was the best I could. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in Spawn. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Hey, <laughs> do you know people like that? Of course, I, I, I. It's about how everyone thinks of my. It doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I have a feeling she was about to say that. Um, that's how people think of her manga liking tendencies. Uh, darling, can you please just uh to flip this book for me, please? Thank you. I wrote it because it's easy to relate to. Everyone can has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something they're afraid of people finding out. They make fun of you and lose and think less of you. I honestly don't care if you think less of me, but I'm just gonna say it all the time now. But boom, Lucifer, boom, Lucifer. <laughs> um But it just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone? And it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect other people li liking real things. Yes, yes, yes. I like you a little bit more now, Natsuki. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about her, uh, an unusual hobby of hers. I don't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things yes this game said it's dark what is with this great advice over here what the hell's going on itchy back really well i mean yuri's pretty weird so i i wouldn't doubt that she has something some has some weird hobbies not that there's anything wrong with that yeah don't start being a hip hypocrite now natsuki it's not like i would judge her or anything Natsuki has trouble finding the words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. Yeah, maybe you should not be so mean to her. Maybe you shouldn't be mean to her for her weird behaviors, you know? I always hate people making me feel insecure. And me, me, you made me feel insecure yesterday. Ah, uh, it kind of goes both ways, my friend. But the way you put it, sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message of her poem. It's what I do best, after all. I, I, I don't like writing unless it's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotion is important. But I want to make people think it's just not just feeling. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it! <laughs> so look out. Okay, everyone, we're done reading each other's poem, right? I have some extra plans for today. If everyone could come and sit in front of a room. What would be considered the front of my room? Would it just be here? I mean, the door is over there. Nah, this, will be, this is the front of the room. I've already sat down in front of the room, Monica. Don't need to tell me twice! Gulp. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. 
do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good just in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That concerns me as well. I don't really do well in last minute with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters and I've been designing some pamphlets. We can give out we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um Monica. Yeah? We're going to do we're going to have we're going to be having a poetry performance and I cannot read. So poetry performance? A performance in general? No! Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. A recite! That's even worse! This is why I chose voice acting. I don't have to recite shit. You tell me how to recite shit! But the cool part is, we're also going to let anybody else come out and recite the poems too. Sayuri is putting on all the post putting on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Sayuri, who's been coloring posters, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You did You didn't need oh you did already start putting posters up at you! Uh well I did. Uh, do you think that was a bad idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm gonna perform in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Ooh. I ruined my hair. <laughs> my hair is always ruined though, so it doesn't matter. Guys, no Sayuri. I understand where they're coming from. I remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems to anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to the whole, a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. I'm so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give this our best. We're only we're the only ones res we're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. Because there's only five of us, and if five of us don't perform, no one will perform, and then we'll all die. If we start the event and each put a good put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we will be in showing everyone what literature is about! I'm being very loud. I bet my parents are probably like, what the fuck is she doing? It's about expressing your feeling, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. That's debatable on my part. I only came here for the cupcakes. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. And I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes to recite a poem, then I know you can do it. I don't think it takes two minutes to recite a poem, okay? Especially if the poem's short. You know what? I'd be the person that deliberately writes a short poem to read out loud to people so that I don't have to stay on the stage for too long. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. So Yuri looks worried. I guess it leaves me your choice. I agree! I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Yeah, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew, thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. 
Alright! That's everyone! Excuse me. You're the best, Yuri! This club is serious. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Okay. Oh gosh! <laughs> You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway... Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to protect, practice, protect, protect. Ha 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 ha! We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way, Monica! Monica! That's too sudden! Well, if we can't recite your poems in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no! Don't worry. I'll start. I'll start off and help everyone feel more comfortable. <laughs> I can go next, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Oops, through a notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself, and she stands on the podium. The way they fly, Monica became. Did we read that one? I don't even remember if we did read that one or not. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line, and rec she recites. Bringing words to life. My waistcoat is riding up my stomach. Is there. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished, finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. <laughs> Monica takes a deep breath and smiles. Th that was so good, Monica! Thank you. Thank you so much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayuri? I'll go next. Wah! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. She keeps her head down and walks quickly to the, over to the poem. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at everyone. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called After Image of the Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts to re reading her poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri just passed the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in a book. I wish that would happen to me when I'm doing presentations back in school. Because that definitely didn't happen. I would stand up there and I get so nervous. My friend who's probably watching this will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Yang. Um... I stand up there and I try to talk without saying ums or uh, you know? And because I try not to, I end up having a shaky voice. I'm just there like, Ugh. I'm struggling to get the words out. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of, fierce, of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. That much is a that must be a whale 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 glimpse in the whirling flames fire. Here it keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she finishes. She finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality, glances around her as if bewildered by herself. I. It's up to me to save the situation. I was the first to start applying! <laughs> Everyone joins me afterwards. We give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her, but we are so caught off guard we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to the seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thanks for sharing. Yuri, 
<laughs> it looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, guess I'm going up next then. Sayuri hops up to out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Ah, uh, sorry, I giggled. Sayuri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror. Or in your own head. Or imagine people in their underwears. That works too. I've never done that because I don't want to see people's underwear, but it's a trick apparently. <coughs> it's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay then, Sayuri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her voice has made was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimless isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayuri is. It's sincere and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think of it. But hearing it come out of Sayuri's voice almost gives me gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe that's what Sayuri meant by she said when she said she likes my poem. It's like I get to reach more deep into someone I thought I knew. Through and through. I keep adjusting my waistcoat and I need to stop doing that. Keeps riding up my butt. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Hey, <laughs> even Phantom liked it. <laughs> I guess it's a good sign. What's that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you nicely. But it might... But be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen your poem was sort of a gentle... I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little... <coughs> behind them. Depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, oh well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everybody. Then, next time, I'm going to pick e a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have time for before, we don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next, Natsuki? <laughs> Don't make me go before Phantom while wow, you stingy little... <sniffs> it's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Phantom lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki, it's fine, it's fine. I might as well go and get it over with. It's not like I have much selection of what to read. I'll just go with what I wrote today. I stand up and set foot on the podium. Everyone has their eyes on... <laughs> Making me feel awkward. I'm actually, because I'm reading it, I'm looking down at the pink bar, so I'm not actually looking at any of their expressions. But now that I look up, yeah, this kind of makes me anxious, yeah. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put the energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then! That just leaves you, Natsuki! Yeah, yeah, I'm going! Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seats and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me like that? <laughs> the poem is called Why Are You All Looking At Me Like That? Because you're presenting. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Like Shonen Jump? Shonen Jump? And starts replying her soul. Her sour attitude disappears. Uh, while she still is a little un... un if you, and enthused, her poem has rhythm and rhythm to it. Rhyme and rhythm to- wait, what the fuck? 
That's it's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well in spoken out loud. The words feel like it's bouncing up and down, as if given life in the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She has to back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, at least, do you feel at least prepared enough to recite in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing! That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, it's just how it is, so... Well, it's, I guess, in that case... I need to stop turning my chair. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't have much of, to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It, may, it might be hard, but I hope that you all, you all have an idea of what's what it's like making sure you pick up pick a poem make sure you pick a poem good enough to practice before the festival okay i'll make i'll be making pamphlets so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting jeez i'll probably have to find some other poem to recite instead that's fine too it doesn't have to be your own i'm i'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort to the club for the club it makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up. And it, let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out nice so far, nicely so far. So I'd like to keep it going. I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow... Then we'll have the weekend to prepare. There, I think there's a tag on my back because it's making my back itchy. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as a Sayuri and Monica. But I do ideas to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayuri? Yep! Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Jeez, guys. Don't make it... Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Phantom. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Ugh, excuse me, why is there so much gas in my fucking stomach? I walk home with Sayuri once more, even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayuri's a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey Sayuri. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. No wonder. Um, I was just thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean, Sayuri Fandu's on her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. I would... Uh, I mean, I don't know where Yuri lives, so I would still walk home with Sayuri. Sayuri. You actually think I ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. She is gorgeous compared to... She, okay, her design is much more beautiful. And the long hair kind of reminds me of what I used to have, so... I don't have long hair for her anymore for a reason, but... Mm, I still like playing with my hair. I still do that now. I still do it quite a lot, actually. <laughs> Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you see, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Phantom. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayuri, so I already made up my mind. I 
I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never gonna happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of... It's kind of a weird thing for Sayuri to care so much about. And that's why I respect her. And that's why I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Time to make another poem With the words they give me I wonder what kind of Okay Well then. Everybody, you know what time it is! Actually, it's a little bit, um, over time. Unfortunately, this episode was a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. Day three, holy shit. Day three was a long day. 